What's going on everybody? Josh, startaraingetterbusiness.com. Today, we're gonna to show you how to get a downspout through your deck or any wood surface really, any surface, and uh, get it to the other side, most commonly a deck. So, we're gonna show you how that's done. Before we get started, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Helps us out a lot. Um, we'll get going with the tools we need to get started. So you'll need a piece from like an elbow or a chunk of your downspout, the size that you're using. Pencil, drill with a um, either a Forstner bit or a paddle bit. And I recommend a size between like three quarter inch and one inch. It uh, usually works the best. And then my favorite tool to do this with is the Fiend tool, or I believe the common term for these is a oscillating multi saw. <laughs> I don't know. We just call them Fiend, uh, fiend tools just because that's who designed it. So, and then a speed square is always nice to have. So let's get going. All right. So it's really cold out today, like zero Fahrenheit. So we've made a little mock up deck for you guys inside. So, uh, this is our deck decking trim board. So the wall we'll just imagine is over here. Okay, so I have the elbow that I'm of, you know, of the same size of downspot I'm gonna use. Gutters up above us, trim board. First thing you wanna do is spend some time researching where everything's at under the decking. I'm not gonna say I've ever done this before, but when you drill through this and you're right on top of a joist, it's a bummer. <laughs> so what I like to do is crawl under the deck, get a measurement. Usually there's, um, so uh, like a standard deck, the, the decks, the decking is, you know, five and a quarter, five and a half wide. So you have a deck board right here. So I like to either take my pencil or a roof strap is a little thinner, stick it through, through the deck crack, the crack in the decking slide it till you can feel a floor joist and then make a little mark. So let's say you slide it over. A lot of times there's a joist coming out this way. Slide your roof strap over, mark it. And sometimes you can even just see these through the bottom. Uh, and then measure when you're underneath the deck, measure from the trim board out to this seam and that a lot of times there's a deck joist also attached to the wall right here. So you want to kind of draw that out so you're not drilling into that. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that your hole gets drilled not into anything down below. So map that out, make some marks so you know where everything, when you're up on top of the deck, you know where everything's at on the bottom. So what we've got here is there's a deck choice going this way and then a deck choice going this way. So we have to avoid both of those. And we have to go out into this area, which is just open underneath. So we have our downspout coming down. Um, first thing I like to do is make sure these elbows come a little flared. So just make sure and look at it and make it a really nice shape before you start kind of bend it around just so you have a nice, looking hole. So put that um, whatever part you're going to use on the deck, trace it out. So that gives you where you're going to put your downspout. Um, sometimes it's a good idea just to go ahead and if you're kind of unsure of the boards underneath, Maybe drill a hole in the center. And then you can stick your finger down there and feel the sides of whatever, depending on how complicated the deck joist system is, you can kind of feel what's down there, um, just if you're unsure. So once you're sure that that's gonna work out, then what I use is this, uh, this uh, drill bit and I drill out each, of, each corner. So I like to come Make sure I'm right to the edge of this line and then spin my bit. Make sure I'm right to the edge of this line and just kind of move it around till it's right in that corner. 
and that's ready to go. This is plywood, so it's probably not gonna look quite as pretty as like a nice deck. Make sure you're using a sharp bit and it'll avoid some of this splintering. Maybe I'll try to strip this out a little bit so it doesn't splinter so bad. Okay, that turned out pretty good. Um, another thing to note, like say, since this deck joist is down here, this is your trim board, we're gonna have to come somehow either a ledge jumper or a you know, angled piece of downspout going into this hole. So depending on how thick your decking is, kind of keep that in mind. And what I like to do is tip my drill a little bit the way the downspout's gonna be coming from, and that'll help that hole the downs will slide into the hole and be in the right place once you get it done. So now we just continue that same process with all four corners. So the more time you spend getting these holes in the exact spot you need them, the nicer this is going to turn out. So one thing I'm looking for when I'm putting this here is make sure it lines up with my other hole. And then again, making sure this is square with this hole and then square with this hole. The last one's a lot of times hardest one to get kind of lined up with everything. Now that we have our four corners drilled out, now it's time for the bean saw. So basically you're just connecting the dots. So I'm just wanting to make a continuation of the very outside of this circle over to the other side. And if you're working with a decking that splinters really easy, what I like to do is kind of score a line on the top of it, or you can even do it with like a utility knife or whatever, but just kind of almost a, like a, just a quarter inch deep or whatever across there to kind of cut the surface of this wood, helps keep it from splintering out. So now you just kind of test fit, make sure it looks good. So one thing to keep in mind if this, if you're having a hard time getting this to fit in there is a lot of times, you know, like I said, this decking is usually inch and a half thick. So instead of messing with the top to, to keep trying to get that fit to fit, you can kind of flare out the sides underneath and that makes your top fit tighter but kind of opens that bottom up so it, you don't have to like jam something in there, your downspout in there. So I have a little chunk of downspout here. I'll show you what that looks like in there. So we got everything fitting in there. Um, how I like to, my favorite way to do these instead of, uh, obviously you can buy pre-made ledge jumpers. The problem that I found with those is that it doesn't seem like they're ever quite the right size. So I like to use just a, a chunk of downspout like this, usually about 16 inches long. And then if you just bevel the top a little bit to kind of match that your angle of your downspout that's coming into it. And then you can put it like a pipe band or a clip right on that seam. And it, then it kind of makes it look like the downspout's just disappearing into the deck and keeps everything fastened to the wall really well. So there you have it. That's how we do uh, go put a downspout through a deck. Um, one thing to mention is make sure, don't just leave this thing, depending on this is a first story deck, second story deck, you know, a bunch of different uh, options out there. So if this were a second story deck, what I would normally do is just another ledge jumper from this crimped end back to the wall down below and then down to where your bottom elbow is. If this is just a single story deck where uh, it's, you know, ground level, Make sure and at least get a elbow on here so the water's kicking out away from, uh, I see that problem a lot, just, you know, people lazy plumbing through the deck and then nobody sees what's going on under there. So you don't know that water's just pounding next to your foundation and that's under the deck's always kind of a damp area anyways. So you're 
making a swimming pool under your deck. So, so bare minimum, make sure you get at least an elbow and a little extension on there. Just to make sure that water's getting away from the building. So thanks for watching. Hope this helped you guys out. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. See you on the next one.